The Jim Baker Show. I'm your co-host, Tammy Sue Baker. Today's special guest, Pastor Mark Biltz. And now, please give a warm welcome to my dad and the host of The Jim Baker Show, Jim Baker. Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. And thank you for being my co-host. My mom's away for a little rest. And we have Mark Biltz back with us with an amazing brand new book. God's Daytimer. Why did you call it that? Did you give it that name? Yes, I did. I even kind of drew the cover of the book because it's, we need to, God has a daytimer and it's like it's locked and we need to unlock the truths that he has within his daytimer. I mean, how many of you would like to have an appointment with God? Ooh. Yes. You know, how many of us believe in divine appointments? I do. Yes. Well, some of them are scheduled. Yes. <laughs> Why yes. miss them? That's right. And you know, what does the Bible say? about the signs and all, because this is what your date dimer is what God puts the signs in the sky. He, he doesn't even just give us the write it, the written word, word, but then he gets us like a, alarms or bells, but they're big, the sun, the moon, and the star. Tell me about that. Well, I think the reason why is, how many of you know there are false prophets in the world? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, I tell you what, the sun, the moon, and the stars can't be manipulated. <laughs> okay. I mean, there it says uh, in Psalms that the, the moon is his faithful witness. This is a lot of manipulation. And then, and then the other thing is this. They speak to every language. You don't need a translator. Mm. With God's word, mm. you, gotta, you have to translate it. People, they have misunderstandings when it gets translated from one wow. language to another. So he uses yes. the sun, the moon, and the stars because it's above man's manipulation and it speaks to everyone in the same language. Wow. I love that. Think about that for just a minute before we rush on to the next point. Because, you know, Mondo, when we were in the inner city, yes. at, we on Saturdays would go out and literally clean the streets, bless the neighbors, paint houses for little old ladies that couldn't paint their houses, and we just, we'd literally sweep the dirt, sweep the sidewalks, do whatever. And one of the houses, you were in my team part of the time, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Because we would go to this one lady's house, a Mexican lady, and she would fix the most marvelous Mexican meal oh, you're making outside oh, on yes. tables in the, aye, aye, aye. big long tables in the yard. She didn't speak a word of English. And I didn't speak a word of Spanish, <laughs> except taco. I could say taco. You didn't have to, did you? No, it was because love. Because that love, no. yeah. that love. You knew. Yeah. You knew. Because <laughs> I we love would, it. I would, can I hug you? Yes. And we would, and it was, we just loved each other. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I ever had a word to exchange with her, but we hugged each other and she just loved us <laughs> and she'd fix all the food is the love too. You know, my grandma yes, Irwin oh, was the, the food lover. I'll tell you that, <laughs> but it's these signs. Yes. You can't miss a hug. You can't miss the sign that says, I love you. Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. But what God is saying, the blood moons, for instance, yes, that you were so a part of writing and discovering that God put the signs in the sky to warn us. What do you think the blood moons were warning us about? What was it saying to us at that time? Sure. Well, I think one of the, the most important things to realize is eclipses occur a lot. Matter of fact, there's uh, every month there's the possibility of an eclipse, but not every month do you have eclipse. And there's been thousands of eclipses, you know, over the last 6,000 years. But the key is God said in Genesis 1.14, he created them for signs, number one, and then it is according to his calendar, his feast days. So if an eclipse occurs over the Arctic Circle and it's on a random day, who cares? That is part of just the natural phenomena. But when God has a solar or a lunar eclipse that goes over a nation that can be seen and it falls on a feast day, now it carries yeah. so much more weight. You can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse on a full moon. So what did God do? He put two of the major feast days on a full moon, Passover and Tabernacles. Wow. That doesn't mean you're going to get an eclipse all the time, but a lunar eclipse. But when they do, and then when they happen on those two dates, now you know, okay, God is trying to tell us something. Lunar eclipse or solar eclipses only happen on the new moon. 
Well, every month on the Jewish calendar begins with the new moon, so there's a possibility of a solar eclipse. But you don't get solar eclipses every month on the new moon. Again, it's only random. But when you have them on the first of Tishri, which is Rosh Hashanah, now there's great significance. When you have them on the first of Elul, now there's great significance. Mm -hmm. If they fall on the first of Nisan, now the first of Nisan is when the fire fell from heaven at the grand opening ceremony of Moses' tabernacle at the inauguration. Okay, now we got to pay attention. And so <clears throat> what I noticed in 2014 and 2015, there were four total lunar eclipses in a row on Passover and Tabernacles. Well, now that's astronomical. <laughs> now it's, okay. it, and when the last time it happened before was 1967, when they captured Jerusalem, the time before that, right, when they became a nation in 48, the time before that, 1492, when the Jews were kicked out of Spain on the 9th of Av. Okay, hello, oh. this is telling me there's a connection yeah. here, yeah. you know. And how many of you know I don't control an eclipse? Yes. No. Okay, you I sure don't, don't control the biblical calendar. I just make the connection using NASA, using, you know, history, biblical calendar, and I just connect the dots and say, okay, God is trying to tell us something. It's so amazing because since I was in the prison and studied, those signs... I, I saw, you know, I found for the first time the sun and the moon going dark as far as being major before the coming of the Lord. Sure. And, and it was because I just read the word and it's there. And God wants you to know what's coming. And uh, so much has happened from the, the blood moon period. You know, and yes. we're living on the brink of the end. This is the beginning of the end times. This yeah. is the time yeah. that the, the, the Antichrist is, is around the corner somewhere. And I got a few ideas who a few of the 10 uh, <laughs> leaders might be. But, uh, you know, there, there is so much that God's saying to yeah. us. And in a few days, we have another great event in the sky, a uh, Solar eclipse. What do they call it? America's Great Eclipse or yes. something? Mm -hmm. The and, Great yes, American Eclipse. And, that. and it's August 21. Yes. And uh, it is really amazing because of the day it falls upon, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Uh, totally. Totally. It's, it's amazing to me when you read Luke 21. You know, first in Genesis 1.14, God said he created the sun and the moon for signs. Luke 21, Jesus says, guess what, guys? There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So uh, if he wants to get mad at Jesus for saying that, I guess he can. But uh, when God says there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, that's why he created them. Jesus confirms it. Well, in Luke 21, the parable begins with the blossoming of the fig tree. Well, who's the fig tree? It's Israel. So that generation begins with Israel as a nation. Okay? And then it ends in Luke 21 with the signs and the sun, the moon, and the stars. So this kind of puts the blossoming of the fig tree at the beginning of that generation and the sign of the sun, moon, and the stars at the end of that generation. So people ask me, well, how long is a generation? <clears throat> is it 50 years? Is it 70 years? Is it 100 years? Is it 120 years? Guess what? It's all of them, and they all coincide to this year. And I'm going to explain this to you. Do it. Are you ready? Right now. I, can ready. you do it? Are you ready? Yeah, yes. I'm ready. Yes. This, <laughs> this is my favorite word. Incredible. Yes. And it really is. But let's go back to Noah. Remember it says it was in, as in the days of Noah, so will it be in the timing of the Son of Man. Yes. So we have to look at its connections to Noah. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. I mean, I'm not trying to force a puzzle piece here. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many years warning was Noah's generation given 120 years? Right. That's what it says. Till the end of all flesh, 120 years. Well, guess what happened 120 years ago this year? This is the 120th anniversary of Theodore Herzl and the first Zionist Congress. Wow. Okay. Wanting to have an Israeli nation, meeting together, saying we need to have a nation of Israel. This year is the 120th anniversary of that. And guess when it was held? It was held on August 29th of 1897. And guess what? August 29th was the first of Elul. Oh. Wow. 
Okay. If you, yeah. Folks, if you didn't order your calendar, be sure to get. Did you guys, how many here in the audience got your calendar? <laughs> yeah. uh, you probably bought them all. We have, but they're coming. But I'm telling you, you like Elu and all those. These are names of what? The biblical months. They're the months. They're the Bible months. Right. And that's why you need to know what's the Bible's. That's the authentic time, okay? And that's why you, you need to. And it, this is the brand new calendar st- yes. starts this it's month. It's a commemorative right? calendar for the 70th anniversary. Mm-hmm. For the 70th anniversary. Wow. And then get a load of this. Not only is it the 120th anniversary, it's the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, okay, stating that, okay, we need to create the nation of Israel. And guess when that happened? That happened on November 2nd of 1917. Guess when that was on the biblical calendar? The 17th of Heshvan, the same day as Noah's flood. Hmm. Wow. And uh, Genesis 7:11, it says it was in the second month on the 17th day of the month. That's the 17th of Heshvan. And it's ex- 100 years from Noah's flood. Again, another tie-in. Then, of course, wow. you have the 70th anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. You have the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. So you have all of these coming to a conclusion this year. Wow. Wow. I want everybody... I want to say this at the show, top of the show because the, the phones get so busy at the end of the show. If you want, in fact, I want everybody to order a calendar. You're going to love having it. You're going to love, and it's, it, and, and it's a calendar for, like, there's, there's September, but it has all the Jewish dates right there on it. So it's the, it's the Jewish calendar or the, the Bible calendar. And then the and colors the, are the different significant days, the colors. You know, you talk about the, the what's coming up and the feast of the the trumpets and the the uh, what's happened in the UN. That to me, <laughs> our audience just gasped yesterday when you when you said that. And I need you to just say it one more one more time because there's new people watching every day, and this the the signs and. What? Oh God! I gotta stand up. <laughs> you gotta stand up. No, no, excited. no. Who said when they say peace and safety? Who said that? First Thessalonians five. Mm-hmm. Okay. How many ever heard when they cry peace and safety? Then the sudden destruction. Yeah. When they yes. say peace and safety, right? Uh-huh. Is that? Yes. Mm-hmm. I have preached it my whole life. I have preached it on TV, probably almost men, yeah. daily almost. When they say peace and safety, sudden. Boy, that's a, that's a Bible, that's a revelation <laughs> word is suddenly. I'm going to give you, as my daughter, I'm going to give you a set of my notes. I'm going to give you a set, Mondo. I want to give John a set. It's time, and you know it's time because God's been saying it over and over, for us to get into the revelation. The, one of the key, 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 key words in the revelation is suddenly, happen quickly. You know, people get so mixed up in the beginning of the revelation because it says when all these things, and then, and, and then it, they think it meant that it will happen now, but they don't study it in the Hebrew or the Greek. You know, it doesn't mean it, th- these things are going to happen then, because that would have happened 2,000 years ago if it would have happened then. Mm-hmm. But it, it says when all these events that we, he's talking about, these things happen, then it's going to happen. Suddenly. And that's where we are yes. now. That's why this suddenly is an important word in the revelation. So you don't understand. I'm telling you what, when these suddenlies take place, you can't go out and buy food. No. When these suddenlies take place, you can't build your house. You can't build a, a, a place of security. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. Mom, Dad, we got the president of Augustine Farms here with us. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, Mondo. Please explain to us what do we have here. 
What we have here is what we started out with a normal everyday pancake mix and we've been creative as can be with this. We've developed over 54 uh, recipes that we can take pancake mix and do great stuff like baked chicken. We can do chicken pot pie. We can do churros. We're doing a fruit streusel, cinnamon rolls. I'm talking muffins. I'm talking apple pie, corn dogs. We're having pizza crust, chocolate pancakes, as well as hush puppies, chocolate chip cookies, drop biscuits, cheese crackers, roll biscuits. We're even have a loaf of bread here made from pancake mix, amazing stuff. Funnel cakes, which we all love, as well as crackers. So Mark, I wanna make sure we understand, one bucket can make all this. Absolutely, one bucket can make that plus more. And when this offer, when they order this offer, they're gonna receive a recipe book that you have put together, over 50 different recipes, and I'm sure we can come up with some different uh, other recipes as well, but just to explain to the people, items, dinner items, desserts, and snacks. So this is the first of many to come on the recipes from Augustin Farms that support products so we can be comfortable, have a sense of ease and comfort in our home as we sit down with our families and have a nice conversation. There you go. As well as a great meal to eat. Now, Jerry, you and Mark yes. have put together an offer that is unbelievable today. Explain to us what can they receive when they order this? Well, Mondo, when they get just one bucket, they start with 253 servings in this bucket. And we got one of them available for just $70. And that has made everything you see in front of our table here. And that's that, over 400 pancakes. That's over 400 pancakes that came but, right but out of waffles, that, that bucket. The waffles are included, the pancakes. And, and even in the front, Mondo, there's chocolate flavored and chocolate Ooh. pancakes in front. So, you know, we wanted to show various things you can do with this batter just to get started in the morning. We, we put together a three bucket offer just in case people one and one to five was too many. So one is seventy dollars. Three is hundred and ninety five dollars. So that breaks it down uh, to just sixty five dollars each. And then we have a bundle. The year for you is five buckets, and that is for three hundred dollars. Okay. Now the the better of all of the above, the best of the best is the year for two. That's two years worth of pancakes. And that's pancakes that you can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three servings a day. And that's just $550, which then 10, 10 buckets for $550 makes it just $55 a bucket. So you'll have a lot of pancakes. Mark, I believe people are going to be calling in, ordering from the website. Never before you guys have put a deal like this before. So why did you guys do this? because of the amazing partners of the Morningside Church and the sustainability of what this food's going to do for them. It's gonna put smiles on your faces on Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and it can save your life. That's the beauty of what we're doing here. I'm telling you, this is the way to go. Start here, we've made it simple, we've made it easy. You're just adding water and you're adding the rest of it. Just fun, you know, recipes and ideas and creations, make your own. Send us, make your own recipe. Send us one back. Let us know what we should add to this. Maybe next time. Absolutely. So go to the phones right now, 1-888-988-1588. Or write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or go to jimbakershow.com and order your products today. Call now, 1-888-988-1588. And you can write Pastor Jim at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. What did the U.N., what did they say? What did they say? Well, every year they have a theme for what International Peace Day is going to be. And um, as I have said, they had chosen different themes and it so happens that this year the theme is peace and safety mm -hmm. and when i read first thessalonians uh, chapter 5 uh, to me that is just so amazing because it says concerning the times and seasons when we realize that's referring to the biblical calendar mm -hmm. And not to, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. He says, brothers, you don't have any need that I write anything to you because you know that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. 
Mm-hmm. And when they're saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them like the birth pains of a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But then the key verse is this very, very next sentence. It says, but you are not in darkness that that day will overtake you as a thief because you're on God's calendar. You know, this is referring to Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah. Mm-hmm. And when it says at the last trump, remember Paul says at the last trump, well, every Rosh Hashanah, they blow the shofar 100 times. And the last blast is known as the last trump. That's what he's referring to, is the feast day of Rosh Hashanah. Not President Trump. <laughs> mm-hmm. The feast of trumpets. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people talking about, there's so many trumps in the Bible. They thought maybe President Trump might be one of them. The last one? <laughs> <laughs> the last <laughs> I don't know. But here we are, this date. So what is the date of this UN? Yeah, that's what's so amazing is back in 2001, they decided to fix the day of September 21st. And it just so happens after 16 years for the first time ever, September 21st is the Feast of Trumpets. It's Rosh Hashanah. Wow. So to have the UN Peace Day fall on the Feast of Trumpets and the theme is peace and safety, <laughs> could sudden destruction be coming the end of this September? Mm. We don't know, but it's, it's a sign. Mm-hmm. We ought to read it. But what does it say? It says, for when they, who is they? That's a lot the of nations. people. nations. They are saying peace and safety. My God, the United Nations, the gathering of the whole world, their theme is when they say peace and safety. God says sudden destruction is coming. And it's on Rosh Hashanah. Okay, and then we have the headline today, developing fear of Yellowstone supervolcano about to blow after 1,400 earthquakes. earthquakes. Sudden destruction. I want to tell you, if if Yellowstone goes, and I'm praying it don't, because it, that's the whole thing. It's a mess. It's sudden destruction. Yeah, that sudden destruction. You can't fix it. Or North Korea. You can't plant food because food won't grow. Pastor Jim it says right here, if the Wyoming volcano were to erupt, it would kill eighty-seven thousand people immediately, and it also take two thirds of the United States immediately with it. That's in the first few seconds. But the food won't grow anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the prophet from the word, the prophecy and the word, the prophets, you need to listen in the last days to prophecies. And people are mocking the prophets. They're mocking bishop. They're mocking rabbi. They're they're mocking uh, Mark Biltz, who is the founder of El Shaddai Ministries. I haven't introduced you yet in Washington State. And uh, appreciate you so much. But here we're talking about sudden destruction. Have you ever seen a volcano? You've seen it on TV, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you we're going to erupt. They erupt. Yeah. Suddenly, they they explode. And Anne Graham Lotz, did you read that news? You, no, you have that, don't yet. you, John? No. Do you have that? Yeah. And, and we're going to keep going on this, so don't, oh, don't sure. give up, folks. Is God's judgment coming on America? This is, this is Ruth Graham. Mm-hmm. But would you read a little bit of what yeah. she said? This is important. What's going to happen? It says right here, a few years ago, she was teaching through the book of Joel when ancient words from his prophecy came up off of the page. I knew with a hair-raising certainty that God's severe judgment was coming on America. Later it says, God is warning America of impending disaster and destruction in the light of Ezekiel 33, 1 through 6, that commands a watchman to be faithful to warn others of the danger coming against the land. The warning is triggered by a total solar eclipse, August 21st, 2017, 
nicknamed America's Eclipse. For the first time in almost 100 years, a total solar eclipse will be seen from coast to coast in our nation. Wow. Is that powerful? The last time, 100 years ago, when the total solar eclipse crossed the United States was World War I. It was in, yeah, it was in World War I that the total eclipse crossed the United States. And it was could we at the same a, could time. Could we have a beginning of a world war? What was North Korea? Who knows if North okay. Korea tried okay. something? Okay, what, what, what did the president say today in response to North Korea? Just recently. You have that to just get yeah. off the press. Uh, president Trump said North Korea will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen before if it continues its threats. Okay. Who said that first statement? Donald statement? Trump. No, and who said it before? Kim Jong. Yes. Uh, the president of North Korea was saying we would face he, that. Yeah. yeah. He was saying we, he's going to rain fire and yes. whatever on us. And the president turned around and says, we are going to rain fire on you. Yeah. Now, listen to us. Could this be? I'm not saying it is, but it, could it be? A beginning of another world war at this eclipse? This is why I think we need to repent. Again, just like Nineveh, uh, they repented at their solar eclipse, and they were spared for a 100 or so years. Yeah. So, again, I don't set dates. Uh, I set dates as far as when they fall on the biblical calendar, when Nassau says they're going to come. But I, as far as what's going to happen, we raise possibilities. But nothing is set in stone because if we repent, then we're spared. This is such powerful teaching, and we want to thank Ann Graham for teaching through that with us too. Mm -hmm. But it's the multitude of witnesses. But look at the words, people. For yourself knows well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. For when they are saying peace and safety, when they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come on them like birth pains on a pregnant woman, and in, will they in no way escape. But you, oh, I wish the church would get it. Mm -hmm. You, brothers, aren't in darkness that that day should overtake you like a thief in the night. They got the calendar. People That's say, the Bible, oh, God <laughs> says, we're not going to know. Would you comment on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> they don't believe me. In, uh, so well, I, you're a scholar. Go ahead. Oh, and I'm no us. scholar. Yeah. But you, how many of you know you have to look at things scholar. in context? Mm. Yes. That's right. Yes. When you look at the verses where it says he comes as a thief in the night and you won't know the day or the hour, look at who he's talking to. He's talking to the foolish virgins. He's talking to the oh. evil servants oh. in, Leo, in the revelation when he tells the Laodicean church that you are blind and naked. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 17, it talks about those who are blind and naked. He will come as a thief in the night. So who does he come as a thief in the night to? But the foolish virgins, right. the evil servants and the sleeping church. Wow. That's who he comes as a thief in the night to. Which is why in First Thessalonians says, but you're not in darkness because you have God's calendar. You know the daytimer. You know what it's going to be on Rosh Hashanah. Now, just to... Well, let me, see, that's why you have to study to show yourself approved. How many people look for Santa Claus in July? <laughs> <laughs> they know not to be watching. That's right. And it's the same concept. Yeshua is coming on Rosh Hashanah. That's when he comes. Biblically, that's when he comes. That's what I go over in my book, God's Daytimer. Get the book, brand new book. I don't know if we're the first to introduce it, but we're, we're, we're right at the top up here. That's right. So it's God's Daytimer. This is what God's timing is. This is what God, this is, we're, we're there now, people. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. You know how in the Bible it says uh, to us Christians that how we see through a glass darkly? We only know in part. Uh, well, I understood that. Just as the spring feasts of the Lord were fulfilled to the very day, to the very hour of his first coming, you now understand the Lord will fulfill the fall feast to the day of his second coming. 
today's offer is God's Day Timer Offer. For a donation of $35, you're going to receive God's Day Timer Book, God's Day Timer DVD, and the 2017-2018 Jewish Calendar, which is September 2017 through December 2018. That is 16 months. That is a value of $52 today for a donation of $35. In this offer, Pastor Mark Bills breaks down the seven feasts of the Lord in a way that is easy to understand and explains the importance of knowing God's calendar to better know Him and His plans. He fulfilled the spring feast to the day. He'll fulfill the fall feast to the day. But if we're not on the calendar that God is on, we're going to miss the event. If if you love God and and you want to be there at the event, then it's it's a good thing to be at the dress rehearsal. Think about this. Would you want to be at the wedding of the Messiah? Oh, yeah. And so I tell people, then why wouldn't you want to be at the dress rehearsal? He teaches us about the feast and prophetic dress rehearsals for what is to come. He teaches us the significance of keeping Passover, Yom Kippur, and other feasts. In this 16-month calendar from September 2017 through December 2018, he clarifies and identifies the significant events according to the Jewish calendar using scripture and Hebrew references. Dad, when they call right now, they're going to receive God's Day Timer offer for a donation of $35. You will receive God's Day Timer book, God's Day Timer DVD, your 2017 and your 2018 Jewish calendar. That's a value of $52 to you today. So call right now, 1-888-988-1588. Or write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or if I was you, I will go to the website, jimbakershow.com, and get your order in right now. You know, why am I prepared? Why, why, why do, if you came to my house, why would you, and I took you down to my base, you would see enough food for 13 years, 14 years probably, I don't know. And why would I do that? You know why? Because I went to prison and I spent so much time in this book called the Holy Bible that I became a fanatic. I believe it. I believe the dates. I believe the times. I believe the hours. And if you read it all, it's going to start harmonizing. It's going to, you're going to begin to believe it and understand it. Yes. I found the answer in the Bible to the revelation. Mm. And we're people in the last days. And here, the United Nations... This year, announced the date of September 21st is the day of peace and safety to the world. Pastor, you know, you bring this word. What can we expect during this time? As, As the body of Christ, as the church, what can we do during this time? I'm not saying anything's going to happen on that day other than the solar eclipse. What I'm saying is just like when the bridge is out, you get the warning ahead of the time before you get to the bridge. So I really believe this is for God's covenant nation to giving us time to repent. Just like Lot had a little bit of time, a little window uh, to get out of there. Uh, In his case, the destruction came. Uh, But I I really believe that what we're to be doing, it is a sign to the body of Christ that we're supposed to be praying and interceding for our nation like Abraham, being aware of what's going on. He says that in uh, Isaiah, he was looking for an intercessor and he couldn't find one. God's looking for intercessors. That's what he really wants. And who knows, of all the viewers that are here from all of the United States, they're watching everywhere. How many people would it take in your county or your city to mitigate the disaster that's coming. So for me, I think believers all over need to pool with other believers in their city and their county and be praying for their city, for their county, for their state. And who knows if maybe the disaster might not be mitigated in their particular area. So for me, it's all about intercession. God wants to know where his praying church is. 
Mm. All right. The day you were talking about the uh, there was an eclipse that set off. Was it the First World War or Second World War? First World War, at the beginning of the First World War, in August of 1914, there was a total solar eclipse going over Eastern Europe and the Ottoman Empire, and it speaks of judgment and what had happened. World War I, the Ottoman Empire okay. was destroyed. Then there was another one but, at the end of World War I that patterns exactly this hey, one and in how the long, United States. how long was World War I? Anybody know? Four years. Okay. Roughly, 1914 so, to 1918. Could it be... These signs are like the gun going off on a race or on an event. I love that example. I love that example because, you know, in high school, I would go to a lot of track meets and different things. Yeah. And if you remember, there'd be people in the stands watching, and then you have the runners getting ready, and they would all have to get on their mark. They'd get their fingers down on the line. They got their rear up in the air. They're ready to go, you know. But they can't jump the gun. Oh, boy. If they jump the gun, okay, come back. You do it more than Turn once, over. you're out of the race. Well, Hebrews says we're in a race, mm -hmm. okay? And I believe right now our fingers should be on the line. But you have to wait for the gun to go off. You can't jump the gun. And so this is why I'm not saying that this eclipse is the gun going off. Yeah. I'm just saying this is the countdown to the gun going off. And we have to be careful that we don't jump the gun and we don't say this is it or anything like that. But we need to be prepared and watching. It says in Luke, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. What it's, are we looking at? The signs in the heavens. That's right. It's always preparing, always looking, always being ready. And the church is ignoring it. They say, well, he hasn't come. Well, that's what the Bible says that would happen. They said many would be scoffing and mocking at the last days, saying, where is the sign of his coming? Because they don't know the signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who are mocking the prophets today, mocking, saying, well, it's, he hasn't, didn't come back. Jesus is supposed to come back. Well, I'll tell you what, when he comes back, it's over. <laughs> be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, he's given us time for the great harvest. And this is so powerful. And when you hear all these things coming together, and if there's ever been a, a woman of God, it's Anne Graham Lotz. And when I have these words from her right here in front of me, a headline, in God's judgment, is God's judgment coming on America? The sun will be turned to darkness before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Joel 2.31. And everything you're teaching, it's just like, the, the, the dominoes, everything. It's just all, come, into all the coming into place. Yeah, well, many of you have also heard maybe of another eclipse coming seven years later, okay, in 2024, and it comes from the southern United States up toward the northeast. All right, well, the question now is what does that mean? Well, first off, guess where the crosshairs is? Of these two eclipses, one this year and one seven to seven, sound familiar to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, seven years later, it, the crosshairs is St. Louis, Missouri, which is the gateway city. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the heartland of America. Not only that, guess when the eclipse occurs that year? On Nisan 1, the first day of the religious calendar, when the glory fell and lit the fire in Moses' tabernacle. This is significant. And guess what? St. Louis is in Missouri and Illinois. Mm -hmm. That if you look at the crosshairs, it goes right through southern Illinois, which is known as Little Egypt. Wow. And the southernmost city is Cairo. Okay, so I, I'm telling you this is, and because of the crosshairs, here's another thing that's amazing. The letter Tav in Hebrew, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is where we got our letter T from. In the ancient Hebrew that Moses, David used, the letter Tav looked like our letter T at a slant. It's, it's, it's like an X almost. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening on that eclipse. It's forming the X, the letter Tav, over the United States. Now, the letter Tav in Hebrew means a sign. Okay? It is a sign. So again, this is a sign. But what is really amazing is what are the mathematical odds of having an eclipse? Let's look at the mathematical odds for a minute. Because how many of you know the sun and the moon look like they're about the same size in the heavens? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, but why do they, why is that? It just so happens that the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun and the sun is 400 times further away. So because the sun is 400 times further away, 400 times bigger than the moon, they look the same size. Now, this is why you have different types of solar eclipses. If you have a solar eclipse where you have the light around the sun, that is because the moon is at apogee instead of perigee. What I mean is this, here's the earth and here's the sun and the moon goes around it, but it goes around it like an egg, it's oval shaped. Sometimes it's real close, sometimes it's real far. When the moon is at its furthest point from earth and there's a solar eclipse, it's not as big as the sun and therefore you have the ring of fire around it. But if it's at apogee and it's at its closest point where it's closer to earth, now it appears bigger and you have the total solar eclipse that blackens it out. Mm -hmm. Which is what we'll see on August 21st. Yes, which is August 21st. Now the amazing thing too is here's the sun, here's the earth, and the moon's orbit is not horizontal, it's at an angle. Mm -hmm. And so again, the mathematical odds of having a total solar eclipse is incredible, Mm -hmm. which is why you know it's a sign from God when it falls on his feast days, when you look at the mathematical odds, because guess what? Here we have the sun and the moon, 400 times larger than the other, 400 times further away, Mm -hmm. created on the fourth day, and the Tav, which means sign in Hebrew, has a numerical value of 400. Wow. The same value as the size and the distance. And these are for signs. <laughs> you're, you're rocking our world right now. <laughs> this is amazing. This is why you call it in your book a divine appointment. It's all in the math. It's all there. God is mathematical. He has everything created so we would know when the divine appointments are to be if we would just get on his calendar. This is the brand new calendar for 19, or 2017, 2018. And uh, this is, uh, what, 16 months, That's uh, this calendar? Yes. Yeah. This. All of next year. It, the rest of this year and all of next year as well. So order it for a gift of what? $35, $35 is all. $35. You get all of it. Do it. And... and Order it for your children and grandchildren and friends. Start pouring into them some of these things. And and if they at least get it in their house, when the crisis has come, they will be able to find answers from men and women of God. It's very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I I just really feel strongly that this is time for you to order this. You know, just a few days from now is this uh, this peace and safety. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is the date. <laughs> yeah. September 21st. September 21st. That's not very far away from no. right now. This is this is going to this is going to shock the world, and it should. It's a warning. I think things are going to happen. I don't know when, but I know this: we are in a time America's never been in this mess never been like chaos this before chaos everywhere at every level chaos no and you, you you said that when over the white house you saw yes. mm-hmm. the rainbow the this rainbow, rainbow. Mm-hmm. i think the united that states it was is a, a sign. covenantal nation that god is still in covenant he doesn't break covenant we're the ones who break covenant mm-hmm. yeah so he's trying to tell us i don't want to do this But we are held accountable by what we know. There are more Bibles in America than any other nation. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be held more accountable. Let's go over signs in the skies. Why should we pay attention to them? When do they, is there any time they don't mean anything? If if there's something in the sky going off? Sure. I think to me, the significances of eclipses is when they fall on God's calendar, number one, and the area that they cover. That's what we have to look at. Wow. Just like World War I, there was a total solar eclipse over Eastern Europe and over Turkey. And what happens? You have World War I, and the Ottoman Empire is destroyed. You had a total solar eclipse during the time of Jonah. But they repented, and they were spared. And so a total solar eclipse doesn't mean judgment has to fall. It's all dependent on if, as a nation, we repent. So that's this, when you know there's a significance, is when uh, they fall on key dates on the biblical calendar. 
and then what uh, do they fall over the ocean or over a nation? You know, so when they fall over a nation on key dates on the biblical calendar, then we know that nothing necessarily has to happen, but God is trying to tell us something. Wow. So the calendar that we're talking about, God's calendar. Yes. The calendar we have in the United States isn't necessarily God's. In fact, it's, it's, Kind it of, was based on it's Rome. It's kind of mixed up. It right? was Rome. It was Julius Caesar. It was called the Julian calendar. And then Pope Gregory changed it to the Gregorian calendar, the Catholic calendar. Mm. So the calendar that we use today is based on pagan Rome, Julius Caesar. And it was called the Julian calendar. Wow. So we're, we're totally on the wrong calendar. Mondo, you had a question, I think. Well, yeah. You know, I, you're explaining this calendars. And, and we talked about earlier... Privately, we talked about why in, in one calendar there's one moon, in another calendar there's the sun, but in God's calendar you see the sun and the moon. Right. Why do you see that? Well, because he, God cre- said in Genesis 1.14, he said, let them be used for the calendar, not one or the other. We use the sun. That's what the Julian calendar was based on. Okay. And Islam uses the moon and only the moon, which is why Ramadan some years will be in July and some years Ramadan will be in December because it just floats with the moon. But God told Israel, Passover has to be kept in the spring. Therefore, you have to use both the sun and the moon uh, to keep his calendar. We have a leap year where we add one day every four years. But on the biblical calendar, they add an entire month, seven times over 19 years to keep Passover always in the spring. And so they have a leap month. It's called Adar 2. And so that's why it's so important that we get on God's calendar so that we know when he wants to meet with us, like at Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacle. The sun and the moon are both witnesses. That's why it's two. That's why he said use both, not just the sun or the moon, because let everything be established in the mouth of two witnesses. And that refers to God's calendar, the sun and the moon. That's why the biblical calendar is the only one that gives witness to what God is doing. Are there signs in the sky uh, of what's coming soon, would you say? Yes. What's amazing is you not only have the great American eclipse august 21st and then 30 days later you have rosh hashanah which is celebrated for two days the first and second of tishri Mm -hmm. now here's what is amazing the very next day september 23rd is when the great revelation 12 sign is seen in the heavens where virgo is clothed with the sun the moon is under her feet Mm -hmm. and leo which represents the lion the tribe of judah the messiah only has nine main stars in it. For the first time in history at Rosh Hashanah, three planets are joining into that constellation, creating the 12 stars that you read in Revelation 12. Uh Mm. That's never happened before. Now here this is happening right above Virgo's head. She's going to be crowned with the 12 stars. She's clothed with the sun. The moon is under her feet and Jupiter which represents the Messiah. It's in Hebrew, it means the righteous planet. Okay, is also going right along Virgo's side. It's like the birth of the man child. Now, here's something that I think is amazing. You know, in Revelation 12, the sign talks about the birth of a man child. Do you know everything has to be connected back to the Torah? Everything. When in the Torah do they mention the birth of a man child? It's in Leviticus 12. Easy to remember. Revelation 12, Leviticus 12. Leviticus 12 talks about if a woman gives birth to a man child, she's unclean seven days, and then there's 33 days of purification. If it's a girl, it's a total of 80 days instead of 40 days. Is all of you familiar with that verse? Mm. But let me share something with you. Here, what do we have? Uh, Remember Anna and Simeon when they came and they saw the Messiah, Jesus, in the temple? That was the 40th day, okay? Because... Miriam gives birth. She's unclean seven days. She has to wait for the purification of 33 more days. 40th day, she comes into the temple. There's Anna and Simeon, the prophet and prophetess. Okay. Now, she's unclean for how many days? Seven days. Do you know from September 23rd with the Revelation 12 sign of giving birth to the man child, you add seven days, it takes you to Yom Kippur. This, now she is clean. Then there's a 33-day 
wait until she's purified and can present the baby in the temple. Guess what happens 33 days after Yom Kippur this year? It takes you to November 2nd, which is the same day the Balfour Declaration of Here is Israel needs to become a nation. It's the presentation on the same day on our calendar. Mm. Wow. Again, tying history to the biblical calendar. Once again, w when do we really need to pay attention to a solar eclipse? Because you're saying not all of them are Right. The, you pay attention to a solar eclipse when it falls on Nissan 1, yes. Elul 1, Tishri 1. Okay, these are the main uh, dates. Okay. And if you want to find out what those dates are, get you the, a calendar. And there's not very many places you can get them. So you can order it today. Uh, get the whole package because you need to have God's day timer to find out more. I love this book. I love how you've put it together. This book has so much to teach you so you will understand. We study to show ourselves approved, to be able to understand. And then you're going to get the video from Mark on this subject, God's day timer. And the calendar. So order them today, order them for your friends. And if you want just a calendar, you can get that for $15, I think it is. And you can get three for 30. Yeah, three for 30. Yeah, to get to three of the calendars for $30 gift. But order them, go to our website and you can shop for all the things, but be sure to begin to put food away. Some of you have never ever, and I think this warning yes. is a warning. Huge. Huge. That is telling us we've we better start preparing. We better get ready. I asked you again privately: Are we living in the most vital hour of our history? And you said absolutely. Yes. Why do you think that we're living in such critical hour right now? Well, again, uh, to me, the Lord talks about this generation will not pass away. And what generation is He talking about? Well, one thing that I think is fascinating, too, and you see this in Psalms uh, 102, I think it's about verses 15 through 20. It says, when the Lord will build up Zion, that is when he will appear in his glory. Okay, Zion is Jerusalem. All the big trouble today is building up of the settlements. Okay, this is all the big political trouble with Zion. Okay. And then the next verse says, and this is written for the generation to come. In Hebrew, the word is akaron, and it means the last generation, the terminal generation. So the generation that sees Jerusalem back in Israel's hands and that being built up is the generation that will see the Lord appear in his glory. And we are that generation. With all these events coming up, do we have something to be fearful of or as sinners should be fearful? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, the Lord constantly tells us uh, to not be in fear. Uh, and, the, you know, to be honest with you, uh, in one sense, and I say this from practical experience, uh, I've almost died so many times I've lost count. <laughs> I've had guns at my head twice. Just me and the gunman and said they were going to blow my head off. And uh, I'm still here. So beyond a shadow of a doubt, I really felt like God is telling me, if it's not my time, it isn't going to happen. And if it is my time, there's nothing I can do about it. And so for me, it's like, I have no fear. All we're going to do is change clothes. We're just going to, and I need a new body, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> What is especially significant about the constellation occurring now? Well, I think that Virgo, you have the constellation Virgo, which represents the woman in Revelation 12, the virgin that gives birth to the man-child. And there's many levels of interpretation. Uh, in one sense, that represents Israel giving birth to the Messiah. Uh, but also here, John sees this. Now, this is what's fascinating. It, I am not saying we're going to see this happen in the sky. It's impossible to have the sun so bright that you're going to see stars behind it and you're also going to see the moon. So John is the only one who says that he saw it. It never says that we would see it. Mm. It just says this is what John saw. 
But we are to know it so that when we know it's going to happen, we can be aware of it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that it would happen at Rosh Hashanah. Again, this eclipse is happening at Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah, remember I was talking earlier about how the Lord said he comes as a thief in the night. Rosh Hashanah, because it's at the new moon, the beginning of the month, most of the time, the holidays were the middle of the month, like Passover and Tabernacles. Well, it's easy to find when the 15th of a month is when you've been counting for 15 days. But Rosh Hashanah on the first of the month, they had to wait for the temple priest to sight the new moon and then declare it. And then they would light fires over all the hills so people in Iraq would know that it is Rosh Hashanah. And because it's a, that's why they made it a two-day feast because no one knew when it was going to begin until it was cited by the priest. So the Feast of Trumpets is the one feast and the only feast in the Bible that is known as the feast where no one knows the day or the hour it would begin. Wow. So that's what it was called, the feast no one knew the day or the hour. <laughs> and so this is, this is why uh, that the Lord says he comes as a thief in the night. That has to do with that feast.